Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to be both good and fast in Maya. And obviously, this is one of the most important things, is to try and develop a workflow that enables you to be quick and efficient. Uh, the truth is that most animation studios require their animators to be good and fast, uh, and making the week weekly quota is one of the biggest challenges for anyone in the animation business. So um, uh, it's important to focus on a good and efficient workflow in order to make that happen. So the first thing to do is establish your layout and then save it out. Uh, and this is, this is very important when you're just um, setting up your animation layout. Um, and basically what you want is a three panel view split at the top. So on this side here, on the right hand side, you're going to have your uh, perspective view or often your camera view. When we create a camera, that'll be your camera view. And then up here would be your orthographic side view or perhaps your perspective view. Once you've created a camera in the right hand side, the right hand viewport, you can have this left hand viewport as your perspective view. And then down here you want the graph editor. So it's a, a three panel view split at the top. And it's super important to have all these three things on your screen at the same time because you always want to keep an eye on the camera, on the graph editor, and also in your perspective view. And the perspective view is where you will dolly and zoom. And then you go ahead and save this layout under uh, in the animation menu under Window Save Current Layout and a little box will come up asking you to name it and name it Anim or Animation, something like that. And then you can retrieve that at any time by going to Window, window uh, Saved Layouts and you'll find it there in the list of saved layouts. Okay, so once you've done that you're going to create a camera. Um, and you always create a camera whatever you're doing. The reason it's so important is because we always animate to camera. So whether you're working on a feature film or a TV show or an advert, there's always a camera view and you only ever want to animate what the audience will actually see. Everything else is simply waste. Uh, the only exception to this rule is if you're working on games, in which case you have to be able to see things from every angle. But we're focusing for now on, on uh, working for film, TV and advertising uh, and uh, in that case you do want to create a camera and then lock it off. So you go to um, create cameras camera uh, then you select the camera uh, and you can do that in the outliner just go to window outliner you'll find the camera there uh, and you always want to name the camera so um, so double click on it in the outliner and name it shot camera and that way there's no confusion you always want to get into the habit of uh, naming your work so that anyone else going into your shot can easily find it uh, and easily identify it so uh, once you've done that uh, click on the camera in the outline that selects it that highlights it now, in the channel box, you can right-click on it and go to Lock Selected. And what that does is it locks it off. Uh, you you, you, you drag-select all these values, right-click, Lock Selected. That locks it off. That means you can't change your camera by mistake. It's very easy to animate on the camera by mistake. Now, the next thing you want to do is relax your rig. And what I mean by this is most rigs come in in their default position, uh, set up like this chap here. Um, it's a sort of... Uh, 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 crucifixion look, if you'll forgive the metaphor. Uh, very stiff, uh, arms outstretched, legs straight. And this is how uh, these things are modelled, and there's a good reason for that if you get into modelling. Uh, but for animation, it's not helpful at all. So the first thing you want to do is just relax it. Drop the arms down. And we're doing this at frame one, by the way, and we're going to set keyframes on all of these values. So drop the arms down, bend the elbows slightly, bend the hands, bend the wrist, uh, relax the fingers slightly, uh, uh, just grab the uh, world or the, the, the main body move and just bring it down a little bit in the Y translation just so that we relax it. Take the feet, angle them outwards slightly, whatever the rig is, people's, people's feet usually angle outwards just a little bit. And then just, just bend the spine controls a little bit so that um, the character is less stiff and more relaxed. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure that whenever you're blocking your work, block out everything from the beginning. I often look at student work uh, and um, I'll say to the student, well, where's the facial expressions? And they'll say, well, I was going to do that later. Well, don't do it later. Set up the facial expressions from the beginning. It's really important because the eyes are the window to the soul. We'll come into eyes and facial expressions later in much more detail. But for now, just know that whether a character is happy or sad or angry or, 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 or fearful or... Um, contemptuous, whatever the expression is you're going for, it's super important to set up the shot uh, with a proper facial expression at the beginning. So, so um, it also helps you sell your work to the director and it's a really good habit to get into. 
The next thing to know is don't animate on the world mover. Here's the world mover down here, this, uh, this cross-shaped thing. In the world mover, you only move once. It's when you move the character into place. Um, otherwise, you really just want to use the individual body controls. So as a general rule, just animate the world mover to move the character into place in the grid and then never touch it again. Um, the other important thing to remember is to, to decide which controls you want to use and then stick to just those controls. And the reason I say that is that it's very easy, especially uh, complex rig, they tend to have lots of uh, controls that do very similar things. So for example, this character here, we could relax the, the spine using this control, or this control, or this control, or even that one there. Um, and you want to just get into the habit of just using one. So, for example, rotating the spine, let's just use this uh, central control here. And the reason for that is it's very easy to forget where you've set keyframes. So if you're disciplined about your approach, and you only set keyframes on certain controls, then you won't forget uh, and, and end up with a whole sort of spaghetti of different curves in your graph editor that you then can't, um, can't tidy up. It's a, it's a sort of variation on the theme of keeping things simple. Uh, now the other thing is with facial expressions, pick an attitude for the shot and broadly stick to it. You're not going to need multiple expressions in a shot. Uh, you might have two. Most shots involve a change of some kind in a character from happy to sad or say uh, surprised to fearful, something like that. Um, but don't, you don't want sort of four or five different expressions, you'll just confuse the audience. So very important to pick an expression and then, uh, and then stick to it. Uh, the other thing is to remember is to is to keep your eye directions consistent, um, and you'll see you'll see this if you go to the theatre and watch actors. You'll see that they all look at each other all the time. They hang on to each other, the, each other's eyes, and it's very easy in animation for um, eye direction to uh, be sloppy and for the characters not to look at each other. It's especially important if you're animating a two-character shot with one character looking at the other. Uh, or both characters looking at each other, you must remember to make sure that the characters look at each other. Um, so um, uh, it's super important, especially if you're showing anything to a director. Directors get really annoyed if characters are not looking at each other. Uh, another thing, another good habit to get into is always show your work in high res. So when you're, sh when you're uh, rendering out a quick time of your work, um, make, or making a play blast, do it as high res as you can. Directors like to see stuff that is nice and crisp, and not uh, fuzzy uh, and hard to see, and you will get your work approved quicker that way. Finally, when you, whenever you render out a, a, a frames for viewing to a director, imagine you're the director, and ask yourself, does your shot make sense, and is there stuff missing that you've got to explain? Uh, another test that I like is, is what I call the, the niece test or the mum test, which is if you show it to your mum or your, or your niece or your nephew, will they understand what it is that you're doing? And the, if the answer is no, you probably haven't done it right. Um, so you've got to make your work clear um, and um, uh, you don't want to uh, confuse people when you show a first rough pass at your animation. Okay, so uh, those, are, those are some points that I think it's worth um, going over and these are all important tips if you're, if you're hoping to be good and fast at the same time and get your work uh, quickly approved by directors. Um, this is a, a, it's actually a variation on a lecture that I, I had at Blue Sky Studios when the very talented Galen Chu, who's one of their supervising animators, gave us a, a lecture not dissimilar to this, talking about you know, uh, how to set up your shot in the beginning. And the reason for that is a lot of us there were new to 3D, I certainly was, and it was really, really helpful to have all these tips set up in the beginning so that we could, um, we could develop a more efficient and faster workflow. So, um, good luck with that. Uh, I hope this helps you. Uh, work quicker and better.